Hey everyone, this is Jason from Alphatone Audio. Today we're going to do a little personal project. This is something that's been on my personal to-do list for a while now. And it's about standards. To start off with a joke, the old joke about standards is, the good thing about standards is, there's so many to choose from. One of the standards, or at least, you know, standard connector types out there, is this 2.1 millimeter barrel connector center negative. And pretty sure if you've got a pedal board with a power supply on it, there's a whole bunch of outputs that go with these 2.1 millimeter barrel connectors. And on your pedal side, you've got the corresponding input. Now, behind me on my shelf, I have a whole bunch of pedals in use and unuse and disuse and repair. And every single one of them back there at the moment uses this particular power scheme. Except for this guy. So, all was not lost though, I've been using it with this, which came with my power supply, which is the 2.1 millimeter barrel connector down to 3.5 millimeter mini plug, which personally I feel is super lame and I hate it. It's one more thing to go wrong. It's one more thing to get disconnected. It's one more thing I have to keep track of. I, I, I just don't like it. I hate adapters, widgets, dongles, and all that crap. So we're gonna get rid of this I'm going to take the existing power jack out of the chorus pedal, I'm going to drill a hole in it, and I'm going to put a standard barrel connector jack on it. Now, as long as I got it open, I figured there's a couple other things we can talk about. We can talk about some of the jack switching that goes on um, around power inside a lot of these pedals. So, as you probably know, um, if you're running your pedal off batteries, your battery doesn't go dead as long as there's no cable plugged into the input. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm gonna have my multimeter here. I'm just gonna set on continuity. I'll have that to test with. And I'm also gonna have this to test with, which is female XLR to male TRS, and everything is wired discrete, pin for pin. So if you look in here, even though all of our guitar cables Standard tip sleeve, two conductor. So why do they put a three conductor jack on the pedal? Well, let's go through, through and see what's what. Let's plug the TRS in. And I will, let's see what happens to pin one. I'm gonna check it against every single one. So pin one first. Okay, so I get connection on the middle. Pin two. I get continuity on the left and pin three. I get continuity on the right. So again, just proving here, this is a true TRS jack on here with three discrete pins. So now let's plug our standard quarter inch in here. I should get one beep, nothing and nothing. Now though, if I move down to the sleeve, I'm gonna get no beep and continuity here and continuity here. Okay, why does this work? So on all quarter inch jacks, whether you have the two conductor tip sleeve or the three conductor tip ring sleeve, the, it doesn't get any longer or shorter. Okay, they're both gonna be the same length. So basically if the ring goes away, the sleeve just gets longer, which means that it easily contacts both the sleeve and the ring contacts on the TRS. And if you follow the battery trace, the negative actually goes into one side of that connector and comes out the other. So the continuity on the battery actually flows through the sleeve on the quarter inch cable. And that's what actually makes that connection. It's actually, it's nothing fancy. It's not a true switching connector or it's not a normal type connector. It's just a very convenient little hack that we use to pass the current through the sleeve on the quarter inch jack. Now having said that, uh, I am gonna remove this. Uh, I'm only gonna power off the DC input. Um, I, I just don't use batteries. So I'm gonna take this off and that's not gonna be a problem for us. Just gonna pull it off and, and that's it. Moving on to the power jack. If we get in here and probe this one, we look at this battery lead. We see you have a lead coming in from the input and we have a lead going out and we have the output side going to the output. So 
And this is going to be the difference between this power jack and this input jack. If I check these two, I get continuity from the battery lead, okay? Now, if I take this and plug it in, let's check it again. Okay, I get no continuity. Why? Because this is a true switching jack. The difference between the non-switching jack and the switching jack is when you plug a cable in, nothing about the jack changes, but the circuit changes on this one. Because this is a true switching jack, when you plug something in, the switch changes, but the circuit doesn't change. It's kind of the opposite of this. And this basically just determines where your power is going to come from. So when I plug, this is difficult to see, it's small in there, but when you plug the plug in, there's actually going to be a small copper bridge that's going to go from the center to the right, okay, to get pushed down. Normally, that bridge is actually will be connecting the battery to the output. But when that plug comes in, it actually pushes it down and out of the way, and it breaks a physical contact inside that jack, okay? And the reason I'm talking about this is when you go to order your replacement part, you need to know whether you need a switching jack or not. If you want to keep the functionality of the battery, then you're going to need to get a switching jack. I don't, so I got a non-switching jack to replace this with. Okay, whatever you want to do. It's certainly, you can do whatever. It's certainly your choice. The only last thing I want to check is I want to make sure that when I disconnect this jack, I know where the new wires are going to go. So, because I said this is going to go away, this red wire, ah, and it fell off for me. How convenient. And I don't have to desolder it. So that goes away. And then I just need to figure out on the new jack which one gets the positive, which one gets the negative. So I already know that this coming out of my power supply is center negative, which means the sleeve must be positive. So again, I have the multimeter. And sure enough, positive is the one that's going right into the board. So when I get the new jack, I just need to figure out that um, the sleeve on the jack is going to get connected to this wire. And then because I only have a two connection jack, um, this one is going to go up to the positive. So just going to take a couple minutes and I'm going to desolder this jack and put the new one in. I'm back. The new part is in and I have a story for you. Because the first time I did this, it didn't work. It kind of worked. Let me explain. Took the old connector off, put the new connector on, and I tested it and it worked. No problem. I thought, great. So I put it back together. I put on the pedal board, plugged it in, didn't work. Okay, fair enough. And something to think about right there, I, I always test that way. If, if I have to disassemble, disassemble something and test it, once I'm done with what I'm doing with it, I, I test it when it's still unassembled. Then I reassemble it and I test it again because you never know what's going to happen during the assembly process. So here's the original part I took out. Now, one of the reasons I went through and I talked about all the jack switching up front is because I wanted to know which part I needed to get to replace this one. And I knew this was a switch jack, and I didn't necessarily need a switch jack because I was going to permanently disable the 9-volt input on that. So I went out and I sourced a new jack, and I just got the 2-conductor because I only needed the, the one input. Um, and because this is a metal chassis on here, the barrel on this is metal, when I went and got the replacement part, I figured, hey, why not? I'll just get the metal barrel. Nice, sturdy, good-looking part. So you can probably see where I'm going with this. When I put it back together and the barrel touched the chassis, it wouldn't work. I would immediately lose power, probably short it out somehow. Now, I had thought about this when I was ordering the part, so I thought, well, I, you know, when I was going to put in the new jack, it's center negative. So I thought, well, let me just do the continuity test on this and see where this center ends up. And it turns out it ends up on the sleeve on this, which, if you do another continuity test within the pedal, it actually ends up at the chassis. So I thought, okay, it won't be a big deal if the barrel of the jack hits the chassis. Turns out it does. Now, th there is one thing about this. I if you look at it, um, th there's some kind of coating or polyurethane or, or something that's on this. Now, it's possible that, again, I don't know the, the grounding methodology here in complete detail, right? But when I drilled the pedal out, 
like I said, it was originally quarter inch, I drew it out to 5 16th. It's possible that whatever little finish was on that pedal got removed and it had exposed metal on there, and that's what caused the problem. Maybe metal jack didn't cause a problem if you don't drill it out, because there was just a little bit of insulation on there from the finish. That may have been it. There, there's no way to go back and verify that now because I had to drill it out, so th there's no going back there. Um, regardless, when I was trying to figure out the fix, I mean, well, I knew what the problem was, so I thought, well, I have to get you know, a plastic barrel connector, but I was reading up on it, and it turns out the vast majority of all the pedal DIY guys, they all use the plastic barrel connectors to start with, and sure enough, I went back to the shelf, I looked at every single pedal I had, every single one has plastic barrel connector on it. So I thought, okay, future note, always go with the plastic barrel. Can't go wrong. So, plugged it all, you know, took this one off, put this one on, tested it, worked fine, assembled the pedal, put it on the board, tested it, and it still worked fine. So. As far as I'm concerned, uh, this is working for me. A couple closing thoughts on this project. One, when you go into something like this, always make sure that you have a clear vision of the outcome that you want. For example, one of the outcomes that I wanted was to remove the nine volt battery clip. I guess it didn't really matter that it was in there, but I just knew I wasn't gonna use it and why have it in there if I weren't gonna need it. Now there was a side effect that came out of that. Because I took that off, and I changed the wiring a little bit. So instead of this input into the board going through that jack over here on this side, it goes straight to the power connector. And as a result, that jack switching that we talked about went away, which means as soon as you apply power to this pedal, the pedal is on. And it's not gonna switch on or off depending on whether or not there's a quarter inch jack on the input. Again, while I did not foresee this, it's very easy to understand why it works that way in hindsight. And again, I still don't care because I always run this off a of power supply and I'm not worried about the battery going dead anymore. Just something to think about when you go in and you go to make a change, just think about the repercussions of the change and make sure that uh, any changes are going to align with what you want for the output of the project. Secondly, drilling a hole into the enclosure for the jack. As I originally said, this was a quarter inch hole to begin with. I had to drill it out to 5 16 for the first part, which of course didn't work, so I had to drill it out again to half inch. Now, on previous videos, we were doing the pedal board stuff, I used to hand drill a lot, and I showed a lot of ways to get you know nice perpendicular holes with the hand drill and all that. I definitely did not use a hand drill on this because I don't particularly consider it safe to do so for a couple of reasons. One, when you have to drill a hole in your enclosure, the drill is gonna end up, at least the tip of the drill bit is gonna end up inside of the pedal. Now on this one, it's not a huge deal because there's a lot of room, there's a lot of clearance from the back of the jack here to the edge of the PCB and this potentiometer here is well below uh, the bottom of the hole as well. So when the drill bit comes through, it could actually come quite a ways into the pedal without hitting any of the components. So no big deal. On other pedals, there's gonna be a lot less clearance, it's gonna be a lot tighter. Uh, drill press allows you to very accurately extend the drill bit into the piece, and it gives you a lot more control. Secondly, uh, this metal is pretty thin, which isn't necessarily a big deal, but because it's just a flat shape that this has been bent, there's no side support on it, you can bend it and twist it, which means it's not particularly stable. Um, when I drilled this in, in the workshop, I had it in the drill press and I had it clamped down in the vise, really sturdy because it didn't want to move on me. If you do this kind of thing by hand and the drill bit decides to cut into the metal and grab it instead of actually cutting through it, it's gonna spin this thing around really quickly. You could damage the pedal and certainly damage yourself. So there is a certain safety aspect you really need to consider when drilling through the metal. Like I said, I had this locked down in the vise in the drill press. And if you have the means to do that, I would highly suggest you do that as well. If you just don't, I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying be careful, uh, secure it with, with a clamp or just anything you can do to get this as immovable as possible when you go to drill it. And that's about it for this project. I hope you learned something. I know I did, and I'll see you next time.